So the biggest thing we're going to be talking about is, is course environment today. Uh, this is a, a great quote that comes from a paper by uh, uh, Shannon Riggs and Katie Linder. And what they're talking about is how we create online learning environments. So specifically, they point out how the architecture of our course um, signals to students how they're going to uh, interact with each other, how they should interact with the content, and so on. So in a room like this, you come in and typically we've been socialized to know that you sit down in the seat and you listen to whoever's standing up here, right? A lot of students uh, either haven't had experiences in online courses, so they don't know what to expect when they jump into an online course, or they have had not the greatest experiences in past online courses. And so it's up to us as the instructors to make sure that we design the courses in a way that signals to students how to interact, how to engage, so on and so forth. So one thing that I like to talk about when we, when we address student engagement in an online course is the concept of autonomy support. Um, and specifically in creating an architecture of engagement. So when you, when you hear the term architecture of engagement, what comes to mind? Architecture of engagement. Scaffolding. Scaffolding, great. I love that term. What else? Engagement is automatic, it has to be built. So engagement's not automatic, it has to be built. I like that. What else? Architecture of engagement. It's it's intuitive. Architecture of engagement is intuitive. Visual appeal. Visual appeal. Perfect. Great. So we know, we know from the literature on, on online learning and online teaching that this is true. When we create an environment for students um, that is engaging, uh, that's visually appealing, that's simple to navigate, easy to find things, that students have better learning outcomes. Um, today in the keynote, Tom addressed this as well, and this is true for adult learning, that we want to provide choices for our students. Um, this is particularly appealing to adult learners. So we should provide what's called uh, assistive freedom of choice. This comes from uh, Rodensky, 2009. That's what allows students to choose from a few options for an assignment or a project. Uh, in the case of his study, he was looking at an entire course. Uh, he taught a, a web programming course, and he allowed the students to choose their, their big project that they did throughout the semester. One thing that I like to point out from that study is that he looked at beginning students, he looked at expert students, and then he looked at instructors as well, their perceptions of providing the course. Both beginning students and uh, expert students, they chose or, or they preferred to have the options available to them, right? The instructors, however, preferred to only give options when it came to assignments, but when it came to the final project or the assessment, they didn't want to give the students any choice. So I, I think that's interesting from that study. Uh, the next is that we want to provide a rationale. We're trying to help the students understand why we're going through a particular exercise, why we're wanting them to uh, perform a certain skill or demonstrate learning. Um, this ties in really well to uh, self-determination theory. And that comes from a couple of these, but Ryan and DC are the ones that, that are originally proposed, proposed uh, self-determination theory. And then finally, uh, personalization. So providing opportunities for personalization within uh, what we what we provide within the course. Does that all make sense? I see a lot of heads nodding. Okay. Well, I wanted to add something really quick um, about that rationale. The providing rationale, I mean, as we talk about the ease of the course flow, um, we want to provide that rationale and make sure our syllabus explicitly outlines what we're expecting from the students. And we actually read in... Um, 
oh, what's the, the online teaching at its best recently about creating a um, wireframe syllabus. I'm, not, I'm sure that's not exactly what it was called. but That's the idea. Um, but it's basically creating a wireframe for your syllabus and giving your students rationale. So here's one unit. This is why we're doing this. Here's the assignments, and here's what it's going to lead to. And so providing that rationale can get them started off on the right foot. Perfect. So a lot of times, in, especially in online courses, and, and for me as an instructional designer, I have a very specific way that I'm designing a course, right? And it looks really great and perfect to me. And then the students jump in, and it doesn't necessarily make sense to them, right? So we're talking about the difference between the design versus the user experience, or, or how they actually interact in the course. Um, we have looked at the the analytics uh, of courses here at USU, and we've found some interesting insights on how the students actually uh, navigate through courses, how they interact with content. And so we want to share some of those ideas that go along with how we have seen USU students interacting in our courses, and that also pairs really well with the literature on this topic. Aaron. Okay. <clears throat> So I was really excited when Travis asked me to do this because that means that I get to show you my favorite part of uh, working in Canvas. Um, who, who's used design tools? Did anybody go to Kenneth's session today? Kenneth is amazing and what Kenneth does is he sits and he listens to us as instructional designers basically complain. Wait, we don't complain. Never. Mm -mm. Of no, anyway, not. but he listens to the challenges that we have and then he creates these tools to make things better. So design tools is a wonderful tool, it's a wonderful tool to use because it's going to cut our design time by two-thirds. And so I always say it takes me about a half an hour to build out a course skeleton and that's because it takes me 20 minutes to choose a picture for the front page. Um, so That's true actually. It is, it's true. I'll <laughs> sit and stare at pictures forever. Anyway, so what I wanted to do really quickly was to create, um, I know that Kenneth went through this a, a little bit um, in his session, but what I want to do is kind of pull up the multi-tool and show how we do design. So when we, for those of you who have met with us, um, we usually want you to go through and create, we want to create this home page so that your students have a landing area to go to. And so if you have um, information to provide for them, you can put it on your front page. We usually do that with some buttons and then we also want you to put uh, your modules on the front page. And we use a modular system that's, uh, you know, uh, we always say it's up to you to design things how you want to design them. Um, these are just best practices that we're showing you. If you don't want to use modules, that's completely up to you. Um, if you want to do something completely new and innovative with how you organize your course, let's talk about that because we want to hear about it. Um, for example, there is a new student dashboard the Instructures, Instructure is the company that makes Canvas, and we found out the, uh, a couple weeks ago when we were at InstructureCon, um, the big conference they have in Keystone, Colorado, that there will be a new student dashboard coming out where students can create their own to-dos on the front page. And we found, Travis talked about a little bit of the research that we've done on how students navigate through Canvas and through your courses. We're finding that a lot of students just access your course through their to-do list that's already on their dashboard. They're going to click on the assignment and go into it. So usually, we, can I jump ahead. in? So usually, when I'm creating a course, I'm thinking when I create the front page that that's where students are going to go first, yeah. right? And then then they're going to navigate from there. But what we're finding is that not is not necessarily the case. Yeah. And so if you are providing a lot of information or a lot of links on your homepage, mm -hmm. that's something that you need to signal to your students to let them know that that is the place to go, right? That's something you can put in your syllabus. That's something that you can share. Make sure you're looking at the homepage. Make sure you're accessing the modules, the, the pages of content that we've provided, things of that nature. Yeah. So what I want to do also is I want to make sure that your front page is really simplistic. I see a few um, who have their syllabus as their front page, 
And because students aren't necessarily accessing your front page, we kind of want to make sure that that home page is just a landing spot for them to go, find where they need to go, and, and make their way through. I also like to link the home page and the syllabus page on any overview page. I've even gone so far as to link the, the home page on assignments just to get them back to the home page so they're seeing. You don't have to go to that extent, um, but when I find myself in a mood where I want to make a lot of buttons using design tools, <laughs> I'll put that on the front. But I really want them, I really want students to have a nice flow and that user experience through the course. Um, but uh, design tools makes that really easy. Um, but you can go through, so one of the sites we use for copyright free images is Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Um, and I don't know if Kenneth brought this up as well, um, but you can always, you know, choose a photo. It's a free download and they're added by artists who, you know, are giving you this image to use. Um, but I always like to make, the, uh, for me, this is all about the student experience. So who remembers what web, yeah. Is this an outside site or is this through Canvas? I didn't know. Pexels is an outside site. Now I'm back in Canvas and I'm going to upload my image that I just downloaded here. So yeah, so Pexels is an outside image. You can do this within Design Tools. Kenneth has given us this upload embed image that lets you choose the aspect ratio. And that aspect ratio for the front page for that front banner is 10 by 13. And then we crop and resize the image and then we embed. So what I'm really, yeah? Is there a way to dim the front light so we can see the screen a little better? On the front of the Let's front, look. The front of the cabinet, there should be a light. Oh, on the front of this cabinet? Oh, look at that. <gasps> mm -hmm. This shows how much we teach in face-to-face <laughs> -face rooms, right? Oh, oh other wrong way. side. The other way. The other way. Wait. Oh, is that right? Good. Great. Found the right button. Okay. So I'm, I'm worried about the user experience. I'm a very visual person, and as Leslie mentioned, um, a lot of this architecture of engagement comes th you know, through that visualization. But um, I'm always worried about that user experience. Does anybody remember what websites used to look like when the internet was for, like... Okay, so I remember starting to use the internet when I was, like, in junior high. Does that... <laughs> I'm sorry. You can just say that you started using the internet. I started the using the internet when I was in, no, I was in elementary school. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, but do you remember what those websites used to look like? They were very basic, sometimes with really bright colors and, and flashing lights. So I always found that those weren't the types of sites that I was gravitating to. I really wanted something that looked a little more simple. And so that's what I always like to go with. So, because everybody is in Canvas and uploading things, this is, oh, by the way, if you're, if um, something in Canvas is going slow this week, just know that it's probably because everybody's working in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a blanket, you know, statement for you. Anyway, so now I've got my, my picture on my front page. And so what this does is just gives you a really simplified thing. And I really, I like it to look like a website because a lot of our students are used to websites, right? Would you think that that was like Yeah, that? and one nice thing about setting it up with the design tools as well is that for students who are accessing the courses using the, the Canvas mobile device, it automatically has a mobile-friendly uh, version yep. that it creates. Yeah. So one of the things I like to say that Kenneth created for me out of m him watching me go to sites and pulling colors from images is this color picker. So I don't know if you guys know that you can go in and pull colors from an image, but that's my favorite, and he made it for me. Uh, <laughs> no, I just liked it. Anyway, so... Um, I think he did, actually. He did, yeah. yeah. Um, it's the truth. So anyway, you can match all of your, and I, I, this is part of that user experience that I like, is that everything looks uniform and ready to go. And I can give you a few more examples of this. I just wanted to quickly create a front page for you so you could see what it looks like. And, and while Erin's saying that she likes to make it look nice like this, the research also shows that when courses are designed in a way that's visually appealing, mm -hmm. students 
students have a higher perception of quality, um, which also impacts their motivation to engage in the course. So we do like to make it look nice, but there's also a, a, yeah. a purpose behind that for, for the student engagement. You know, Travis always pulls what I say back to research, which is Sorry great. Sorry for that. No, no, it's fantastic because I don't know. Um, anyway, so well, and we've also seen in the last week um, information, some analytics were done on courses that use design tools, and it was found that students' grades are actually higher. We don't know the extent of that research yet, but... Still ongoing. Yeah, it's still ongoing, but... That's pretty much doing really good things. So I'm just going to add some things here, add some modules to the course, and then I'm going to go back to the front page and add the modules to the front page. Is there anything else you want to? It'll end up looking something. I've done some new things with buttons up here. This is also these, these module overviews for this. I really love this Rock and Roll Catalyst for Social Change course uh, that Kevin Olson teaches in the music department. One thing that students identify as well is that they want to have simple navigation. So on that left hand side, if there are buttons that you're not using for your course, you can remove them for, from student view. Yeah. And you can do that in your settings. So let, let me so if see. You go to the, yeah, if you go so to the settings. Settings. Navigation. And then you can just click and drag. So if you're not using outcomes, if you're not using, uh, and you can change the order of those as well. And I also, oh, sorry, go ahead. The whole class, which is each module. The whole class. That's, That's the for entire the whole course. Class. Yeah. That's that left hand navigation that all the students see. And if I'm going to put these buttons on the front page and I'm going to put the modules on the front page, I'm also going to hide modules. And then I'm going to link everything that's needed in these overview pages for the week. And you see we've got, we actually have a listening list for, for Kevin's um, piano literature class. But I'm going to link everything that's needed for the week. So to even simplify even more, I'm going to hide pages, I'm going to hide files. That also is a way to get your students flowing through your course the way you want them to. You say you're hiding with a link? I'm hiding them on that navigation tool that we just looked at. So if we go to settings, and then navigation, I'm going to get rid of anything I'm not using, but that includes files, pages, and modules, because I want them to go to the front page to get those things. And then you, you have to remember to click save. Yeah, you have bottom. to remember to click save. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Is there a way to move the save up to the top? Yeah. Yes, it's always off screen. That would make more sense, right? So this is, yeah, this is a good time to mention that all of you have access to the Canvas community. If you Google Canvas community and go in there, you can always submit ideas for people to vote up so that they can put into practice in Canvas and to ask questions, to get information from um, other instructors. There's faculty, students, instructional designers, admins, everyone's on the community. So you always have access to that if you want to go and suggest something like that. So you just told us that there's no way of doing it unless we tell them. Well, it, it, so there are certain things in Canvas that we can't change. Um, Kenneth has made these tools available for us, but there are certain things like that save button. Also, I get a lot of questions about this as well, this course summary. The course summary that shows up on the bottom of your syllabus page, let me try and find one here, which is basically a schedule of your assignments here, your assignments and your calendar events, that can't be removed either. So the best thing to do is to let others know and to let Canvas know that that's a change you want to make and we can help you do that. It's just one of those things that we don't have any control to change. Yeah. Quick question. Right, you scroll down, which is great, but you've lost all your toolbars on the side. So you gotta scroll back to the top to go to another page, and is that something? Yeah, so this is this. Or is there something we could do? 
Yeah, so this is the course summary. That's one of those areas where if you if you wanted to put a button to take you back to the home page or something like that, you could. But this is the syllabus. This is as much as they're going to need to scroll in a course. I don't I mean, if you wanted to make your syllabus a little more compact through design tools, you can also use accordions and tabs if you wanted to make your syllabus smaller so your students didn't have to scroll that much. Well, it's not a lot of scrolling. Yeah. You lose your toolbar. You do. Mm-hmm. That's just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can put a window, I've done a little bit of what design, just make the window. <laughs> yeah, the same in the window. Right. <laughs> and that's just one of those other things that we don't have any effect so to change. Well, I can't change that. Right. Good. Yeah. Is there a yeah. simple way to toggle back and forth between our view and the student view? That's a great question. So you're asking it how to toggle back and forth between the instructor view and yeah. student view. As far as I know, that's the easiest. That's the easiest, yeah. So you're in here in the student view, and then you can leave the student view. That's basically what... So, so, so if you open the student view in another tab, you're, and then you try and move somewhere in your course, you're still going to be in the student view. Yeah. It's going to pop up again. So one thing to notice um, is we have, in the instructor view here, we have these grayed out items, right? And then when we switch to that student view, as the students, they don't see those items. Yeah. So that's nice to, to clean up the navigation. And the multi-tool for design tools that, that we were using to create that front page and those um, modules, they don't have access to see that. So you can leave that on all the time if you want to. You can also um, open two different browsers. So if you log in, yeah. you have to log in, you can't just use two browsers. But if you have one where you log, where you log in both with your teacher credentials, one you can go to student view, so you have to see the title between the two. Yeah. That's a great point. So yeah. if you so if you open two different browsers, uh, like Chrome and Firefox, you can do that. So you can have the student view on one side, instructor view on the other. Yeah. You can also do that with, if you're working inside of Chrome, you can do that by incognito. using incognito. You can open an incognito window. Yeah. If you go to file and open, you, it'll say open an in, incognito window. And that just basically, it's it's separate Keeps from the separate. other one you've yeah. done. If you don't want to open up both Chrome and Firefox. So. Other questions? Yeah. Where were you guys when I spent 65 hours? <laughs> <laughs> we're. Okay, we're here now. Um, <laughs> but. Um, what I want to tell you is if you want us to do something like this to create a skeleton for you, so basically what we want to do with this and what Kenneth had in mind when he started this is we want you to be able to focus on your content. We don't want you to have to mess around with Canvas. And Canvas without design tools, I don't even know what that is. Um, so <laughs> I, I, if you want us to do this, then you just let us know. Send us your syllabus. I can create this with your syllabus. Can we send you a course and have you do what I call spiff it up? Yes. Please do. I love doing that. That's, that's, that's Aaron's favorite. That's one of my favorite. favorite things to do. It really is. That's what I did with this rock and roll course. I ha we go through every semester and we make sure all of your online courses are ready to go. And I saw this one um, and... Kevin had a long list of YouTube videos on just a really simple front page. And I said, I can clean this up for you. And he said, OK. And so he let me do it. And we created listening playlists for him. We even created a playlist on Spotify. But we made it look <coughs> spiffed up. And he really likes it. And he liked it so much, he had me do that to his other music course, which is his piano literature course, this one. So if you do want to send us a course um, to create a home page and do things like that that Aaron has just showed us, we're absolutely happy to do that for you. If you want to learn how to use the yeah. design tools, uh, we're also very happy to sit down with you and show you some of the basics with those tools um, and empower you to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also have workshops available that we yeah. 
we teach here in Logan, but we also broadcast to the regional campuses into Eastern as well, if you want to sign up for those. So we, we, have, we have a lot of support available for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it show their assignments or do you have to show them? I just have the coming up. Can you change the calendar? Do you want me to view the calendar? I just want to see what pops up as far as... Um... Because like you said at the very beginning, there's the study that showed that... Right, that's from their own dashboard. That's when you very first log in. So when they're the on dashboard. their dashboard, oh, see, I don't. Let me show you my dashboard. So my dashboard looks like this, but instead of the to do, so that I have lots to grade, <laughs> but they're going to have a list of their assignments. And so they'll go in and they'll click and they'll go, oh, I've got this due next week, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this. Did you talk about, I recently finished up an online class and the teacher took a survey afterwards and there were so many things that we didn't know yeah. on there. Because yeah. In all honesty, you're just looking at the to-do list right. as far as the student goes. And yeah. And we're still trying to figure out how to make this better for the students as far as getting them the information they need. And after we heard the announcement of the new student dashboard that's coming out, we know we have to regroup and figure out how to make it easier for students to get through. Because they have... Sorry. Because what we're doing isn't getting them exactly where we want them to be. So, I don't know, I mean, use of announcements, things like that. If, I mean, we can all put our heads together, because so, we're all learning with this new group of students coming in. Yeah? Oh, remember Travis, I mentioned to you in the spring, I discovered somebody that, that I had students that, that was my first discovery, they were on the coin system. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it shocked me. So then I started to create, I created a, a quiz that's required in the first week of the semester, it's called Navigating to Course in Canvas. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. So adding, yeah. So adding a quiz that that has has the students actually going into the modules, into the pages to find what's available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to scaffold and to create that mm -hmm. architecture of engagement. I like that, yeah. Amy. Yeah. So is there any way to, on that to-do list, instead of going to the assignments, go to the modules directly? So they did also just come out with um, something where you can actually put a due date on a page now. And so if you put a due date on any assignment, it'll show up in that to-do list for the students. But like Aaron said, you can also now add a, a to-do or a, a due date, for, a due date for a page. So yeah, it can be so, the overview page on your, the front page on your module, yeah. So that hasn't rolled out yet. Yeah, and trying to decide how to use that strategically, because if we just put due dates on every single item, I don't think that's students doing gonna, the students a service. Students are going to get inundated with due yeah. dates. But, I mean, couldn't you build something in where you integrated that with this sort of stepwise progression to a module? Because you yeah. can do that already, right? Yeah, you so can. You can have it complete module one or week one mm -hmm. by this date, and then you force them, if you want to force them to do anything, mm -hmm. your first page is an overview text page that they have to read and click on, and, right, and they don't get to go to page two, right? So yeah, absolutely. If Mm -hmm. yeah, if, yeah, if you want to set it up so that they are required to view a certain page yeah, or complete a module before they move on to the next one, you, you can set that in Canvas, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I, I just wanted to uh, add what you were mentioning because last semester I exactly found out that students, they were sitting with me, some of my students are in Logan, so they prefer to come to my office, and they were just clicking on their dashboard, what mm -hmm. you, and I realized like, that's why they, were, they have no yeah. I'm announcing on the modules page. Yeah. So this semester, I right. am doing exactly what you said, a quiz. And I quickly wanted to add that one of the things I realized is that in my service page, that whole uh, quiz, 
course scheduling a table for what's the reading, what's the due, uh, it was in the syllabus page. And they could download that syllabus, so as long as they have the readings, they didn't need to go to the module stage. So I deleted that this semester from my syllabus, so that they don't know what the readings are. You have to go to the module stage yeah. and other instructions. So I think they might be really upset. That's yeah, that's a great point. But that's, that is what we're finding, is that a lot of students are just clicking on that link to go straight to the assignment, and they're missing content, and they're missing other things. Um, but I don't think they're necessarily doing it intentionally. Some of them just have no idea. So no, I think, that, I think you're right. Instructing with that quiz, and forcing them to take that navigating quiz, of course, in Canvas quiz, that's what they call it. It teaches them how to navigate through the quiz. It doesn't necessarily teach them how to use the quiz. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that, that ties in right back to what we were talking about at the start, is that we want to signal to the students, this is how you're going to navigate this course best. This is how you're going to be successful in this course. This is how you're going to interact with the content. And, and be upfront and explicit with the students at the start of the course to help them scaffold or to create that architecture of engagement from the very beginning so they know how to uh, be successful throughout the course. And then if they have other faculty members who are using the same outline or the same flow through the course, then you've helped them with that as well. Well, I think yeah. that's our time for today. Yeah. <laughs> if you have other questions, we would be happy to talk with you. Or if you want, just want to shoot us an email, we're, we're available. Yep. Thank you.